So thank you very much again uh, for the introduction. And indeed, today I would like to talk to you about the extracellular vesicle corona. And uh, my my major goal is to to drive attention uh, to this novel paradigm in EV biology uh, because I think it is related to all extracellular vesicle uh, uh, studies, no matter what uh, particular specialty we are having. I would like to remind uh, the field of nanoparticles where the presence of protein corona or biomolecule corona has been there and has been known for a very long time. So in the 1960s, the recognition of protein adsorption led to the uh, research in this direction, uh, which, which implicated that if uh, nanoparticles are introduced to the body or into biofluids, in almost no time, almost instantaneously, protein adsorption can be observed on the surface of nanoparticles. And approximately from 2007, the protein corona concept has been there, out there in the uh, nanoparticle world. As a lot of studies have been carried out in this direction, from 2017, uh, people uh, added uh, a more a general term uh, introduced the term biomolecule corona because it was recognized that around nanoparticles, not only proteins are uh, observed, but also many other uh, molecules can adsorb onto the surface of nanoparticles, including uh, lipids, uh, DNA, etc. So this uh, adsorbed uh, Corona was there for a long time. It was known for different uh, nanoparticles like the gold nanoparticles. It's known that it forms around liposomes, even around viruses and lipoprotein particles, as well as the synthetic nanoparticles, for example, those that are used for, for the MR mRNA vaccination. But the big question was, uh, do we have the same corona formation around extracellular vesicles? And uh, uh, the topic seems to be very straightforward. By the analogy, one would expect that indeed there is a corona formation around vesicles. However, when one uh, carries out proteomic analysis, it becomes quite challenging because in the previous instances, all you have to do is to, to uh, characterize the, uh, the proteins from these preparations. If you subtract viral proteins or the apolipoproteins of lipoproteins, then, then you are kind of all set. You have the composition of the EV corona, how of the, the nanoparticle corona, sorry. But in this case, in the case of the extracellular vesicles, the, it was a little bit challenging to determine the corona composition or even the, to prove the presence of corona because all proteins inside the vesicles in the membrane of vesicles and uh, in the corona of vesicles were from the very same species. Uh, however, we already had some early observations as early as in 2016, uh, in which we found that if we co-incubate uh, extracellular vesicles, and we refer to these vesicles as nascent extracellular vesicles, we call them nascent because they are freshly released into serum-free uh, medium. And if we mix these nascent vesicles with uh, LDL, this is a very osmophilic black uh, structure in the electron microscopic image, practically instantaneously the corona, uh, lipoprotein LDL corona is formed around the vesicles. And we could also uh, demonstrate the colocalization of uh, uh, of uh, CD81, uh, tetraspanin, and APOB on the surface of vesicles by immunoglobulin electron microscopy. In this figure, I, I just want to show you that um, a recent publication, which is present there in bioarchives uh, from Marka Waben's lab, using cryo-EM could demonstrate the very same principle. In this day, could demonstrate the physical association of uh, LDL particles with the surface of extracellular vesicles, exactly the same thing that what we have found earlier. The other early observation 
for the corona formation uh, from our lab uh, came from 2017 next year, when we found that if we exposed uh, cells to genotoxic stress, mitochondrial genotoxic stress in the form of uh, sustained exposure to uh, ciprofloxacin, the antibiotics, what we found was that uh, in one of the density gradient fractions, in the more dense fraction uh, out of the two EV containing fractions, we actually found a very clear uh, propidium iodine staining by flow cytometry indicating the presence of DNA. We analyzed this DNA uh, that was associated with the vesicles and we found was that this DNA uh, was uh, DNA is one sensitive. It was on the surface on the outside uh, of the vesicles. And we found out that these, uh, these DNA molecules were predominantly of mitochondrial origin. So we have seen that uh, both LDL and also DNA can associate with the surface of vesicles. But the big question was still there, how about the protein corona? Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it was quite well known for other particles, but since the EV corona and the EV proteins, the, the genome in EV uh, proteins are both from the same species. This was a bit challenging. What we did was that we uh, separated nascent EVs from THP1 cells and also from washed platelets. Uh, we again refer to uh, nascent EVs if they were secreted into serum free uh, cell culture medium. And then we collected EV depleted blood plasma from human individuals, human samples, 18 uh, healthy subjects and 16 patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And we uh, incubated uh, briefly the uh, extracellular vesicles, uh, the nascent extracellular vesicles um, in these uh, blood plasma samples for a short period of time. Uh, once we had a kind of coating uh, of these vesicles on the surf, uh, on the surface, we uh, uh, removed the vesicles, washed carefully, and subjected them to density the, uh, differential centrifugation, density gradient ultracentrifugation, and size exclusion chromatography. We included several controls: nascent uh, EVs, protein aggregates, a model protein coated uh, vesicle type, and we also separated vesicles by uh, magnetic affinity capture uh, to rule out the uh, the possibility that once we are uh, finding uh, proteins in an EV preparation, it is just a consequence of the co-pelleting. Uh, so we determine the proteomic composition of the plasma uh, protein coated vesicles. We subtracted from this proteomic composition, the, the proteins we found in the nascent serum-free condition released uh, vesicles, and we concluded that the difference corresponds to the protein corona. And indeed, we found quite a bit of proteins. And as you can see by these tiny symbols next to the different protein names, uh, some were present uh, only when we applied differential centrifugation uh, there were proteins which we found even if we separated the vesicles with density gradient or with size exclusion chromatography. And in all those human blood plasma samples, there were uh, corona proteins which were present in 100% of the samples and some were present at a lower frequency. And as you can see, there was a difference between the corona uh, composition of washed platelets and THP1 uh, derived vesicles in the same plasma samples. At the end, uh, we, uh, we could uh, make a comparison between the platelet EVs, the THP1 cell line derived EVs, and publish data on negatively or positively charged uh, lipid nanoparticle coronas as well as coronas described for the respiratory syncytial virus and herpes simplex virus. And when we compared all these protein corona compositions, we ended up with a list of nine universal corona components, which were present in all the coronas. These included, for example, as you can see, APOA1, APOB, APOC3, APOE, uh, complement uh, proteins 3 and 4B, 
fibrinogen and immunoglobulin uh, heavy chain for IgG2 and IgG4. As I mentioned, we wanted to make sure that we are not just detecting artifactually co-palated uh, uh, vesicle-associated uh, proteins. So we took the blood plasma and we used annexin uh, uh, capture to identify uh, corona components. So we could determine that indeed uh, these affinity annexin-5 captured vesicles had CD63 and as well as they had fibrinogen complement 3, 4, uh, APOE1, APOE, and APOG2. We could demonstrate on, on uh, even a gold electron microscopic images the co-localization of CD63 with complement uh, protein 3 or CD63 with haptoglobin. And finally, I think it was very informative for all of us that when we uh, stained the, the uh, uh, released extracellular vesicles with uh, lipid uh, dye, uh, green fluorescent, lipid uh, membrane dye, the DIO, and then we uh, performed immunocytochemical staining for fibrogen and uh, fibrinogen and uh, complement uh, factor three, we found a different uh, um, uh, distribution of the corona proteins on the surface of vesicles. In some cases, as, as for example here or here, you see a relatively diffuse patchy distribution of the corona proteins, whereas in other instances, we found a whole clump, an aggregate uh, of uh, fibrinogens sitting on the surface of vesicles. Uh, when we looked at the, the, uh, the proteomic database, uh, vesiclopedia deposited entries, what we found was that all these corona proteins were present in great many uh, extracellular vesicle preparations. Some of them were present in almost 200 different proteomic uh, studies. But interestingly, uh, they were not only present in plasma EV preparations, but also in non-plasma samples, like in this case. And it's easy to understand why, because uh, if, if vesicles are separated uh, ex vivo, or if, if vesicles are uh, produced um, uh, in serum containing conditions, uh, proteins can absorb on their surface easily. So overall, uh, uh, the concept is that as soon as vesicles are released to the interstitial fluid, or they are introduced into the blood plasma, uh, in the extracellular space, they acquire a collection of adsorbed uh, molecules, adsorbed proteins, and this uh, corona appears to be uh, quite dynamic. It can change. So if a new uh, milieu uh, uh, surrounds the vesicles based on affinity relationships, higher affinity binder proteins can replace the low affinity binders. And I would like to emphasize that based on published data, uh, this uh, extracellular vesicle corona uh, not only is produced in the extracellular space, but also some vesicles acquire corona already inside the cell. So uh, the, either in the amphisome, uh, vesicles acquire quite a few autophagy-related molecules, or we have examples when in the multivesicular bodies, we already have adsorption of certain molecules onto the surface of, of vesicles, for example, APOE or, or uh, for example, integrin bound fibronectin can be detected already as early as in the multivesicular body. And then the released vesicles, of course, also carry this uh, attached protein. These attached molecules never have transmembrane domain, which means that they are externally adsorbed onto the surface of vesicles. And I'm just uh, referring to a few publications this is a 2015 paper from Alisa Weaver's laboratory in which she indeed reported that cells release fibronectin coated vesicles by exocytosis of the multivesicle bodies. And, and these uh, fibronectin coated vesicles play an important role in directional cellular movements. The other example I would like to refer to is from uh, Guillaume Van Nier's laboratory. He found by using cryo-electron microscopy a very strange structure on the surface of vesicles. 
secreted vesicles, and this turned to be APOE. So he could demonstrate quite early on that inside the cell, an intracellularly acquired APOE corona is formed in cells. I would like to also refer to the uh, the paper of uh, Clotilde Thierry's laboratory. By using pull-down experiments, uh, they could demonstrate that there are uh, different types of small EVs, dense small EVs, light small EVs. And in the category of uh, dense small EVs, as you can see, there was the, the uh, set of corona components like albumin, prothrombin, complement, or fibronectin. I would like to also refer to some more recent studies. I am sure many of you are familiar with the recent work of Andre Gergens from, from Samir Andalusi's laboratory, in which he very carefully characterized uh, EV uh, storage conditions. And what he showed was that the storing EV is frozen in PBS, which is supplemented with albumin. It showed consistent stabilizing effect compared to the PBS alone. So we might have a, an explanation why it's beneficial to have albumin adsorption onto the surface of vesicles in vivo as well. Also, uh, another uh, study from Samir El Aldalusi's laboratory showed that we can engineer cells to produce vesicles with albumin binding proteins. This way, the released vesicles will have a very uh, uh, a robust uh, albumin coating, and it has been uh, demonstrated that this way we can extend the circulation time and lymph node accumulation in mouse models. Uh, so I would like to sum up uh, with the with the uh, the note that the illustration of extracellular vesicles showing just the phospholipid bilayer and uh, integral molecules with the transmembrane domain is probably an oversimplification. We do know that many adsorbed molecules are present around the phospholipid bilayer. And uh, we also know that, uh, for example, extracellular vesicle membrane proteoglycans can um, bind many uh, important molecules, including cytokines or chemokines. And ultimately, uh, we have to uh, recognize that around our vesicles, not only we have the, the protein corona, but a uh, complex biomolecular corona, including uh, DNA fragments, lipoprotein particles, and the whole thing is embedded in a hydration shell. We propose that uh, when talking about extracellular vesicle corona, we have to distinguish the naturally formed corona from the artificial corona, the natural corona can be either formed extracellularly or intracellularly, and the extracellularly formed corona can be universal, as we have seen in the case of those nine shared corona proteins, but can be specific as well. And the artificial corona uh, can be formed by two ways, either by purposefully redecoration of EVs, by stripping the corona components and building new coronas, or by engineering the corona, uh, engineering corona forming EVs. Uh, so the concept I'm showing here is from the work of the Strunk Laboratory in Austria. Uh, in this work, uh, what the authors did was that they they demonstrated that we can strip the corona by by intense uh, separation methods like exposing the vesicles to size exclusion chromatography or ultra centrifugation. This might remove quite a bit of the so-called soft corona, the loosely binding associated molecules. And what they did, they could incubate these strip vesicles in a cocktail of growth factors. They could build the new coronas and they could demonstrate that these redecorated EVs carrying growth factors, for example, on their surface were quite uh, active when injected uh, in vivo. So I would uh, conclude that uh, even though uh, it has not been tested for every single type of extracellular vesicles known by now, uh, we seem to have the basis to hypothesize that whenever a cell releases an extracellular vesicle, 
uh, a corona is formed around it uh, and it has complex biomolecular composition. And um, this uh, corona might have significance uh, when we consider the kinetics, the biodistribution of vesicles, the cellular docking, uptake, uh, intracellular fate, uh, drug targeting. So it is something that we might have to keep in mind and maybe we can exploit it for, for our therapeutic uh, purposes. I would like to thank uh, the work of my, my team members and I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Ida. This was an excellent talk, a very interesting talk. Um, and we already um, have some questions um, from the from online um, listeners. And um, I think that um, Piao or Juan, you can, you can even unmute yourself and just ask the question live because I think that we have um, we have time for that, so. Uh, sure, can everyone uh, hear yes. me? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. thanks Dr. Blas for your wonderful talk. Uh, I just feel like those incubation experiments in, uh, you introduced are quite interesting. Uh, and I wonder how those corona actually attach on the uh, EV surface, like are those based on the physical uh, interaction or only all like the chemical reaction? And also, I wonder if those bending are kind of specific or randomly, because uh, for the spec experiment, uh, most of people spec the cell EV into the plasma, right? And we know there are a lot of albumin and level protein. So are those bending just like depends on the abundance of those protein, or is there anything specific happen? Yeah, thank you very much. So there are uh, quite a few known mechanisms for, for protein adsorption onto the surface of vesicles. One known uh, interaction is, is the thiol, the SH group mediated interaction. Some proteins like, like albumin or, or uromodulin contain a lot of cysteine residues. And once we have this uh, molecular feature, uh, disulfide bonds can be formed between the proteins and the surface of, of vesicles. So in this case, we have a covalent bonding and, and it's quite a, a strong interaction. Uh, very often we find that uh, there is an electrostatic interaction between corona components and the uh, uh, membrane of the vesicles. Please remember that many vesicles have an externalized phosphatidyl serine representing negative charges. So, so it can uh, um, be a basis of electrostatic interactions. And also I mentioned uh, the uh, vesicle surface protoglycans. So these vesicle surface protoglycans are extremely important. These include uh, syndacan or glipican or beta-glycan. These are very important because the, the glycosaminoglycan side chains are sulfated. Again, a very strong negative charge, charge, negatively charged uh, part uh, is exposed. And, and we know that we have something like 400 different heparin binding proteins. So Practically any of those can interact with these is heparin sulfate uh, protoglycans on the surface of extracellular vesicles. And in, in addition to that, it has been demonstrated that the membrane of vesicles quite often carry real receptors. So, for example, the, the surface of vesicles carry the tumor necrosis factor receptors. So in that case, it's a receptor ligand interaction. Okay, that was very interesting. Uh, um, the you, the euromodeling binding to EVs, I have to check that. <laughs> this is yeah, a, this yeah. is a very interesting uh, comment. Um, and Anders is asking if you have conducted any binding constant experiments or of purified EV sense specific proteins, so that you would really go to the kinetics um, of uh, binding between <coughs> EV sense specific proteins. Kinetic studies we did not perform, but as I mentioned, we 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 used in some of our experiments as a model protein fibrinogen. So we we did find that that and, and yeah, I, I should add that also we had some other experiments with apolipoproteins. And yeah, so it, it can be very clearly shown that after a relatively short incubation time, um, like 30 minutes, you already see the deposition of of these uh, proteins on the surface of the vesicles. And it, it also seems to be 
Uh, and I have to add to the previous question that it seems like that uh, those proteins that that typically are found on the surface of vesicles from blood plasma, they have a tendency to to uh, to bind each other as well. So so they are not only uh, showing a high tendency to bind to the nanoparticle surface, but also to to bind to each other. And it has been hypothesized that maybe the nanoparticle surface can can serve as a as a uh, inducer of the uh, of the of the uh, accumulation or aggregation of these proteins like like well, how clouds are developing so you just need something to to mm -hmm. induce the formation of the whole cloud of proteins around vesicles oh nice interesting so jingling is there any short question in the in uh, in person meeting yeah it's a very interesting topic for ev corona thanks uh, dr added any question else uh, on site anyone have some questions okay Hi, Edith. Uh, this is Tong Wong from uh, Jinan University, Guangzhou. Okay. Hi. Very nice talk. I have a question for you, please. Uh, the corona is very uh, interesting uh, on EV. Do you think that the lipoproteins will have a similar corona uh, on the surface to bind our traditional marker of EVs like uh, CD63 and CD9, so on? Could you comment on that, please? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting point. So uh, if we we consider that there's an interaction between between lipoproteins and certain uh, cellular proteins like the tetraspanins, then we have to consider those cells which are producing the lipoproteins. I would say that uh, that the interaction between lipoproteins and apolipoproteins and, and vesicles are not necessarily uh, mediated by tetraspanins though. So uh, apolipoproteins have been shown to have some, some tendency to kind of surround lipid molecules in the membrane and, and, and also uh, LDL can bind to glycosomnoglycan of protoglycans. So I, I'm not sure if, if a direct tetraspanin lipoprotein interaction would, would occur.